you know, the problems are, you know, far range when it comes to United. But one thing I don't think is any kind of sensible fan with a brain would say is an issue would be Ralph Ragnick. You wouldn't think so. Maybe on an individual game by game basis, there might be some selection changes or some subs that I wouldn't really be a big fan of. But then, you know, the occasions that Pogba came off when he was playing pretty well, at the, you know, at some points during Ralph's tenure where I didn't think it was the right decision to make. And then, you know, he takes them off and there's whoever comes on basically changes the game or wins the game. So, you know, you have to kind of take those things a pinch of salt. But overall, I don't think you could, it's a fair, it's a fair interpretation of the event to say Ralph Ragnick is basically the reason why we're playing so poorly at the moment. Because, you know, United have basically made every single manager walk through the door look like a terrible manager. You know, even managers who weren't, who, who are terrible anyway, who made them look worse, like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is a good example. Um, but this article or this video that I've seen online just really rattled me. Rio Ferdinand basically it says here the headline courtesy of Daily Mail Rio Ferdinand criticizes Ralph Ragnick for airing Man United's dirty laundry in public and claims that the interim boss should be banned from press conferences which is a wild thing to say right because again like I said this guy comes in as an interim coach right which is bizarre to say at least for a club our size usually you'd imagine if you fire a manager so late into the season usually big clubs don't wait that long to fire managers this is why you get rid of them sharpest so you can give the next guy coming in a chance to actually rescue the season or make some sort of impact where you can maybe it can maybe inform your long-term decision making process they didn't do that they bring him in an interim they didn't spin this story that Ralph Ragnick is also going to be a consultant he's going to help us redo our structure and Ralph Ragnick is also somebody you know has been very well known in terms of being somebody behind the scenes who's built clubs up and implemented structures, been able to, you know, lead to clubs being successful many, many years after he's left. So that gets fans gas, that gets them optimistic. But then, of course, the way Ralph likes to play football and the teams that he's coached or the teams that he's helped manage or whatever he may be consult with, the type of football that they play, that fast attacking, gig and press, front foot type of football, none of our players can do that. None of them, right? They're all going to be blowing out their asses. So we saw it for 45 minutes against Crystal Palace. And then from what we can interpret on the outside, it looks like the players basically, you know, decided they're not going to do that again right this is not for us we can't basically get fit enough to do that kind of football between now and the end of the season there's no point so the players threw in the towel the moment you know Ralph Ragnick got the job because they just couldn't you know keep up with those pace of that kind of training but if you go back to it the reason why Ralph Ragnick was also unsuccessful in the spell or whatever hasn't been as great as a manager he wasn't able to bring in his own guys so he doesn't able to bring his own guys he can't make the changes he needs he doesn't he's not able to bring in signings and stuff and then the only thing that he can do in terms of kind of trying to get us to react to change because it feels like united don't really listen when it comes to we don't really react or make big sweeping changes to the club when things are going well we only do it when things are going bad we're very reactive in that way shape or form so we have to lose many games before we sack a manager like ollie we can't just decide hey you've done a good job after europa league final you, you know we lost that you've done a good job getting us there you're not going to be a manager who's going to be competing with the two shows clubs and the peps and you know we just we, we you will need more help than any other elite manager would need to kind of get over the line so why don't we just shake your hand now let you go and then get another guy in we don't we wait until it gets really dark until a point in time comes where we, we basically left with no other option but to pick Ralph Ragnick and then we start complaining that he's not doing the things that we want to do whatever move on the thing that's really crazy like I said is I think that we only learn through defeat and through bad things and Ralph has been going out of his way to say the most you know eye-opening things in a press conference that I think many fans especially the ones who kind of bury their hands heads in the sands or the ones who think that one player or one manager or a DM is going to sort us it's been very refreshing to hear him say no the reason why we're at where we're at at the moment is because of a b c d and until we get these things in place we're not going to be successful again it's been somewhat refreshing to hear and to see because he's been calling it out and it feels like he's been calling it out in the hope that he can pressure the club into making the right decision because we don't learn you know when it's going good when you learn when it's going bad so for Rio to come out and tell him he doesn't he shouldn't be talking because he's airing up main that public dirt laundry in the public that's what we need we need our dirty laundry to be aired in the public because we don't want to make the changes we you know players or people that come into united who 
are kind of pally pally with the glazers or whatnot they most likely sign ndas or something along those kind of lines or they get given so many sweet benefits that you don't ever see outside of that circle that they go out of their way to defend anything that's going on in that regime but there's no denying you know categorically that the glazer regime or the glazer ownership of man united has been a disastrous failure a disastrous mismanagement some would say maybe the greatest mismanagement of a football club in football history with the way that they've kind of single-handedly destroyed this club from the outside you know with so from the inside with a death by a thousand cuts it's been truly crazy to see the mismanagement over the years and it's been even more disappointing to see former players ex-managers you know basically remain silent on the whole topic and not want to talk about it or if they do speak about it they spin it in a way where they believe honestly or they try to make you believe that a signing or a manager will somehow change things or that Pep, I remember someone saying, if Pep leaves the league, it's different. If Klopp leaves, it's different. It's like, what? We're now hoping and wishing our rival team's um, best managers in their history of their, you know, of their, of their more than the history of their club leave to give us a chance. We're not trying to even to compete with them on the same level. We're just hoping that they may be implode so they can give us an opportunity to kind of be successful, which is why I think this league position that we're going to be in at the end of this season which will probably end up being our worst ever in history i think points tally as well we, we needed it because there's been many seasons where we finished second third we didn't deserve it and fans like myself have said it, it's a false position it's a false position and you get top reds coming out you saying yeah you finish where you meant to finish you finish where you deserve it's like no you don't sometimes you don't sometimes extenuating circumstances happen and you finish in a spot that you probably don't deserve because you're the most consistent out of a bad bunch and i think now finally the better teams have shown why they're better teams than us they basically pulled away you know what um chelsea is like 20 points i think near near enough away from man city at the top of the league and how much points are we away from flipping chelsea do you know what i mean if they're 20 points away from them and that's on the table they're not that bad you know in terms of what you see when they're playing you know on the pitch but if we're 20 more than 20 points away from man city on the table imagine how far we are away from them on the pitch so for to hear Rio say that is really disappointing, but also I'm not surprised because this is also the same Rio Ferdinand who came out when Newcastle fans were absolutely hating Mike, you know, Mike Ashley, they've always hated him, but you know, at, there was a very touchy moment. I remember he said something along the lines of, oh, if Newcastle fans are not happy, they should all put their money together and buy the club off of him. If it's that easy or something on those kind of lines, it was like, excuse me? So he's got prior for this sort of like cuck behavior when he um, is getting his pockets lined. But as I've long said from the beginning, Man United X pros with the exception of maybe a couple, they're all basically working against the club. Some of them probably for their own selfish self-preservation sake, right? In terms of they don't want the club to be successful because it would somehow tarnish or diminish their own legacy. So the best way to kind of, you know, do that in a weird kind of um sigh up way is to basically you know spout as much shit he is in public and then hope the club takes notice of it and doesn't make the right decision that could be one thing or it could be that they've been bought and sold because they get given benefits from the glazers they maybe are allowed access to players they would never ever get they're allowed to sit in the press box and all this sort of good stuff that maybe allows them to basically have a certain agreement where they don't go out of the way to criticize the glazers because if you're gonna criticize united over the last what 10 plus years the only thing that you can really, if you're a sensible person, you look at all the issues from managers to players. One of the things that's been constant throughout the entire time that we've been unsuccessful as a football club has been the owners. They've been the consistent factor in the club. They've given people money in you know weird ways, but overall their mismanagement of the club and how the football side of things is handled and who's in charge of it, who does what, that's been a mismanagement from the Glazers from day dot. So you can't not air them out. But again, if your pockets are getting lined by them, you're going to have to spin some sort of weird narrative to make it make sense. But the article says as follows. Referred has criticized Man United interim manager Ralph Ragnick. Ragnick has frequently been outspoken in press conferences and has criticized United's recruitment, while he has also hit out at the team's defending and athleticism. Right, so standard things you'd imagine, right, for a, a manager of someone of his repute would say. The 63 year old has one game left in charge of United, is continuing as a consultant for the club for the next two years. A former Man United defender says Ragnar should be, not be talking to openly about the club's problems. Like, oh my God, what nonsense. Speaking on his five YouTube show, Ferdinand said, I don't agree with the way that he's airing out the day laundry in public while he's still in the hot seat, while he's still there. It's nice sometimes for the fans, you get to, you get a bit of insight, but there's information that he's letting out that he shouldn't be. You're still on a job, man. Relax. Have some respect for the people around you. What are you talking about? The people around him don't have respect for the club. 
They've been dragging this club through the mud for the last 10 plus years. That's not respect. Taking dividends out of the club, you know, basically turning us into a cash cow, re-signing players on long contracts or renewing their contracts just because you see them as assets to add money to the overall bottom line of the main United stocks. Um, just crazy, crazy stuff. Um, it's nice sometimes for fans to, to make waves behind the scenes. What? push and pull just off of positions and outcomes behind the scenes of people i've said this for a couple of weeks now he's saying a lot of stuff and also distancing himself from responsibility no he has not this is again nonsense from this guy but he has yet to accept he has to accept some responsibility that the team has got worse since he's been there for sure has his tenure been um a little bit of a letdown especially for someone like myself who was gassed on all these you know ted talks that he was doing sitting down talking about his philosophy and what he's done and other club fans or other clubs saying how much of a good job he did previously behind the scenes blah 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 blah. yes of course it's been a disappointment but let's be honest every manager at united post size ferguson has failed overall so if that's the case, why should we have believed that a manager who hasn't really managed at a top level for a m number of years, who's maybe somebody who's used to working with clubs that have a structure already there or sensible people that he can work with already working there so he can make the best of a bad situation, why did we expect him to work really, given what we know about the club? Especially now he was, you know, Ralph Ragnick was hired when Ed Woodward was still there. It's not even like he'd, he'd come, you know, like he was hired there when Matt Judge was still there, when those other scouts were still there. Like, ugh, I don't know. But again, this is this is what selling out does to you, isn't it? You start getting your line, your, your pockets lined by the owners. They start feeding you this claptrap about, you know, he's probably friends with Ed Woodward too in that same regard. Like, I don't understand, man. And Ragnick was left frustrated after his request for the club to sign a strike in January would have rejected so you bring in a football man and he says you need a striker he says the club says nah well Ferdinand understands the Ragnick is disappointed <clears throat> it feels like United need to intervene and stop him from having any more further press conferences oh my god for the great work he's done at previous clubs a lot of that has been recruitment bringing players in he's been brought in to be a manager and manage his team to get Champions League football he's failed in that department um, but then he's shifting blame all over the place and it's a bit that I really find a little bit disrespectful distasteful <sighs> Fair enough, just like people behind the scenes at United will not be pleased with Ragnar he's saying he said he was brought into a consultant first and foremost and then to do stuff in the change room with the long term thinking that he'd be behind the scenes working out what is needed for the squad and had recruitment prepared the recruitment perspective he's offering up names of certain talents but that he feels like will be a huge impact immediately short term and long term he's not being backed and i think that's where the frustration lies he mentioned luis diaz vlaovic who was juventus but united didn't move he said the board declined moves because they're waiting for the summer i think his importance with that i think his impatience with that and his frustration at being born out of the interviews now i'll be honest if i was a club i wouldn't allow him to do an interview or press conference I don't want that stuff to be out in the media. If I'm the person who's running the club, I'd be saying, talk to us, we'll work it out. You might not agree with what I'm saying, but you're employed by us. These are the rules. Stay within the boundaries. <laughs> oh my God. You couldn't get a more clearer example of how our ex pros have been bought and sold. Same goes for Gary Neville and those guys. They had nothing to say about the club and this infrastructure and how things need to change when Ollie was in charge. They made it seem as if Ollie being in charge was legitimately going to get us back to the mountaintop. You know, at flipping Gary Neville on one side was saying how Harry Kane, if United sign Harry Kane win the league, we sign Ronaldo who's got a far better goal scoring record than a Harry Kane and suddenly we still need more help but then he won't point out or slag off his friend who's the manager because he's his friend. Even though he was, you know, ex like in incredibly inadequate for that role given what we know now um at the moment stuff he's saying there there you know the night fresh yeah I, I don't know i don't really know what to say really he's been bought and sold it's sad to see as united legend but again i think i don't listen to any other ex-pros when it comes to how the team and the club is being put together and what direction we should go in and i think if any of us, this if any of it there's an indication where we shouldn't be listening to it if ever there's a sign we shouldn't be listening to real Ferdinand, this should be it this should be a sign that we all needed like you know let that guy just you know chill out where he's needed where he's not really going to be a nuisance to anybody because too much i can't do that <sighs> what can you do